thank you for inviting me to this historic gathering where I've been so inspired by every single speaker. Uh, it's also so wonderful to be among a group of people who understand why we need an alternative to the war parties, to the parties that kill and maim and displace millions of people around the world with no accountability, no remorse, and no lessons learned. I mean, look at the Democrats having Joe Biden who supported the Iraq war as their candidate. Um, these parties both have policies that are based on the same kind of racism, the same kind of brutality that we see unleashed against black and brown people here at home. And so we desperately need for ourselves and for those who are victims of our bombs, our drone attacks, our brutal economic sanctions around the world, we need a party that's not in the clutches of the military industrial complex, of the military contractors, a party that can push our foreign policy in a radically new direction. What are some of those things that we do? Well, we would give our total support to the UN Secretary General, who insists that during the midst of a global pandemic, we must have a global ceasefire. As he said, the fury of the pandemic illustrates the folly of war. We would also push our country to support the global grassroots movement from the bottom up to create a UN ban on nuclear weapons. This movement was so inspiring that it won the Nobel Peace Prize and it's been supported by 44 countries. It needs 50 countries to go into effect. Our country should be one of them. We would also save $1.3 trillion that both parties have allocated to quote, modernize our nuclear weapons. We do not need more modern nuclear weapons. We need an end to nuclear weapons. Many of the other speakers have brought up the issue of the Pentagon budget. This is something that we need a party that will get seriously to work at taking on this grotesque, distorted budget more than the next 10 countries combined, a budget that robs us of the pot of gold that we need for healthcare, free college education, Green New Deal, and on and on. We couldn't even recently get a majority in either party to vote for just a 10% cut, but there are a few brave Congress people like Con Congresswoman Barbara Lee, organizations like the Poor People Campaign, my group Code Pink, that have called for a cut in the Pentagon budget by half. And this is where we need to go to save us billions, but also make us safer here at home. We need a party that would stop the Democrats and Republicans from trying to take us into new wars. Now, with two major powers, two nuclear powers, and I'm talking about Russia and China. Both parties are vying during their campaigns to see which one can be tougher on Russia and on China. This is extremely dangerous and we have to shout out loud and clear, China and Russia are not our enemies. We refuse to be taken down that path. You know, it's interesting because on one level, both parties understand the war is not popular with the American people. And that's why they've been mouthing the platitudes that they will get out of these Middle East wars. But both of the parties have kept us mired in these wars for over 20 years. We need a party that won't talk about bringing our troops home, but we'll do it. We need a party that says, hell no, we won't continue to give $3.8 billion of our tax dollars to the apartheid state of Israel and will instead support Palestinian rights. We need a party that says, hell no, we won't keep selling weapons to grotesque human rights abusers like Saudi Arabia and the UAE, and we won't support the horrific war in Yemen. We need a party that says, hell yes, we'll re-enter the Iran nuclear deal and work with all the countries in the region to find an end to the violence that has destroyed so many lives. And here closer to home, we need a party that understands the devastating effects that US policies have had in Latin America and the Caribbean, including policies that have forced people to flee their homes to seek asylum here. We need a party that will bury once and for all the Monroe Doctrine based on interference and regime change like this administration has been trying to do in, with Venezuela 
and will instead initiate a new good neighbor policy grounded in the principle of non-intervention. I wanna end <clears throat> by bringing forward the example of a tiny Caribbean nation, Cuba, a country with a fraction of the financial resources the US has, thanks in large part to the 60 year old embargo, but a country that has showed the world what international solidarity looks like. Instead of sending troops and bombs overseas, it sends doctors and nurses to save people from earthquakes, hurricanes, and yes, pandemics. Today, Cuban medical missions, which the US government has been trying to sabotage, are fighting coronavirus in over 30 countries, which is why there's an international campaign to nominate these Cuban doctors and nurses for the Nobel Peace Prize. You can find out more about that campaign by going to cubanobel.org. So I look forward to working with you all to build a new party that understands and promotes international solidarity and is determined to live in peace and cooperation with our brothers and sisters around the world. Let's build it. <laughs>